Well hello everybody and welcome to Fashion And with me, Scott Schiavone, Fashion Curator. This week we are going to be taking a look at one of the most flamboyant, creative and sexy fashion houses in the history of 20th century and contemporary fashion, and one of my personal favourites. This week's episode is Fashion and Versace. Versace, 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 Referred to by Vogue magazine as the brand that defined late 20th century glamour, the House of Versace, established in 1978, is not for the timid or faint of heart. Famous for dressing the most glamorous of women and men in their ultra-luxurious and high-impact styles, Gianni Versace was a man of inexhaustible energy and enthusiasm. He delighted in all forms of creativity and was like a sponge soaking up the cultural zeitgeist finding inspiration in history, art, music, museums and galleries. Since his tragic death in 1997, his sister and muse Donatella has been creative director of the luxury Italian fashion house and has navigated Versace from near collapse to commercial success. With such a long and illustrious history, this episode will consider the work of the House of Versace through five themes, Versace signatures, art and history, sex and advertising, men without ties, and celebrities and Donatella. And before we get down to it, for those of you who would like to know, yes, I am wearing vintage Versace again. As you can see, we've got some beautiful red silk with gold Baroque swirls, and on the back... Whoa. Every designer aspires to create a signature look or series of landmark pieces that trace the evolution of their house style. Today, we accept Versace's design signatures without the shock and sensationalism of the past. There are many Versace signatures that we identify the brand with today. One of the most recognisable is Gianni's use of print. In print, Gianni Versace was bold and daring, combining the Baroque with wild animal prints, neoclassical imagery with ancient Byzantine mosaics, and seashells with Rococo borders. Rich and wondrous prints came to be expected of Versace, as Gianni enjoyed their grandeur and opulence. His prints dazzled the eyes and created visual spectacles of colour, pattern and exuberance. His prints included butterflies, pop art and Native American Indians, all juxtaposed with animal prints, Baroque and Rococo ornaments, cherubs, Miami South Beach Art Deco and characters from the Comedia dell'arte. The juxtaposition of disparate elements was similar to the punk aesthetic, as was Gianni Versace's use of the safety pin. Those of us of a certain age will remember the iconic Versace safety pin dress worn by Elizabeth Hurley when she totally eclipsed Hugh Grant at the premiere of his movie Four Weddings and a Funeral. Through the construction of this dress, Gianni Versace expressed the movement of the body, giving it a chance to break through its cloth barriers, which was held together by a series of Versace Medusa decorated safety pins. Opening the dress from the bust to the waist and then again at the upper leg, unleashed and exposed the body. Body consciousness is part of the Versace heritage. Donatella said that their mother, who was also a seamstress, would look at the body of a client, take the measurements and cut the pattern. She never got it wrong. My mother knew how to get women's attention, and they certainly got everyone's attention here. Studding was another of Versace's signatures, and Gianni treated it as if it was a form of printing. This studded jacket and dress ensemble from the Autumn Winter 1991-92 collection takes the technique of studding to the extreme. Decorated with a plethora of studs which historically were used to reinforce workers' clothing, Gianni used studding as a design feature, marking out one of the house's most recognisable motifs, the Greek key frieze. This is a perfect blend of classicism and ornament, creating pattern and design by piercing the soft, supple leather with the hard metal studs. 
Versace's use of leather transformed it as a material more associated with the world of motorcycles into a staple of the female wardrobe. Gianni said, leather, one of the materials I prefer. At Versace, leather was studded, quilted and embroidered, favouring glamorous fitted styles with cinched in waists. Leather also gave Versace an opportunity to tap into the world of sex and S&M. His infamous bondage collection from autumn winter 1992 featured restraining leather straps with top stitch detail which fastened through jewelled buckles and was akin to bondage wear. Some critics branded the collection as vulgar, but Versace responded, Vulgarity is for people who are frightened, not for us. From the early 1980s, Gianni Versace pioneered a unique metal chainmail fabric known as Oraton. He created many evening styles using this Oraton fabric and manipulated its weight and fluidity to create shimmering gowns that recalled the draperies of classical sculpture. Gianni pushed the boundaries of this exquisite material, treating it like it were some type of gossamer or fluid silk than a hard, cold metal. Dresses made from this fabric conveyed the physical power of women, such as Xenia Warrior Princess, or as Gianni said, Joan of Arc had her chainmail. In terms of art, Gianni Versace was a connoisseur, enthusiast and collector, but as a designer, Gianni Versace was stimulated by it. He incorporated art historical elements into his designs from the mosaics of the Byzantine era to the pop art world of Andy Warhol. Gianni believed that art should be for everyone. He did not observe the distinction that many placed between popular culture and the high culture of art. When Versace and art combined, each garment became a living art form. His appropriation of the iconic faces of Warhol's Marilyn Monroe and James Dean caused as much sensationalism when presented by Versace as they did when Warhol presented them 25 years earlier. By appropriating Warhol, Versace corroborated his beliefs that fashion is to art what art was once to popular culture, both sordid scavenger and beautiful correspondent. Versace also referenced the work of Robert and Sonia Delaunay and Alexander Calder. Historically, Gianni mainly focused on four periods, Classicism, Byzantium, the 18th century and the 1920s and 30s. For Gianni, history was the legacy needed for contemporary imagination. Think of the Versace logo, for example, the head of the classical Greek mythological figure Medusa. Various legends have been perpetuated as to the origin of the famous logo. One, that it came from the floor of ruins in the area of Reggio Calabria, where the Versace children played. Or, the other, from a door knocker found at a property that Gianni bought in the 1980s. In any case, the Medusa was chosen as the logo because, as the designer himself said, those who fall in love with the Medusa have no way back, so why not imagine that those who Versace conquers, that they too cannot go back. Some of Versace's most recognisable motifs, such as heavy metal embroidery and jewel encrusted crosses, reflect the Byzantine mosaics of Ravenna. In his autumn winter 1991 collection, this encrusted halter neck top shows the religious iconography most associated with the Byzantine era and pairs it with a leather jacket bearing heavily embroidered crosses, a motif that was heavily represented in Versace's last collection in 1997. References to the 18th century are seen in his delightfully excessive Rococo and Baroque skirts. Inspired by the open gowns of the 18th century French court, these ensembles, instead of displaying virtue and valour, concentrated on the sensuality and the love play found at the court. Never allowing for a reference to languish in the past, Gianni Versace brought it right bang up to date by pairing the skirts with sporty denim shirts and over-the-top gold necklaces. Brava! It was in his earlier collections that there was a distinct focus on drapery and pleating, directly inspired by the French couturiers from the 1920s and 30s, such as Madame Grey and Madame Vionnet. Sex was an integral part of the designs of Gianni Versace. He envisaged sex through the sexually liberated perspectives of the 1970s and 80s. The sex worker had become glamorised through movies such as Pretty Woman, 
where the central character played by Julia Roberts was portrayed as having a heart of gold. Gianni Versace embraced this new portrayal of the sassy sex worker and incorporated her bravado, conspicuous wardrobe and blatant sexuality into his designs. But instead of looking cheap, these women were presented as glamazons, rich and expensive looking. Glamour darlings! By the 1990s, the glamorised style of women had been accepted into society as the tycoon's mistress or ravishing second wife, alluding to the famous phrase, Armani dresses the wife, Versace dresses the mistress. Gianni was redefining the character of the modern woman as an autonomous, self-defining figure of authority within modern visual culture. Versace enlisted sex into fashion and accepted it not merely as a fact of life but as a celebration of it, saying, I like sexy clothes, they express joy, they break barriers. In his spring-summer 1991 collection, Gianni Versace created embroideries and prints using vintage and contemporary Vogue covers. This collection directly connected the fashionable garment to the fashion media. In an industry where image campaigns and advertising consumed a large number of pages in the glossy magazines, and especially in Vogue, this was a kind of I'll scratch your back, you scratch mine kind of situation. And who could resist? Advertising for Versace was about media seduction and the desire for clothes to communicate. The iconic ad campaigns shot by the likes of Richard Avedon and Irving Penn are what set apart Versace from his contemporaries throughout the 80s and 90s, creating that distinct Versace style that encapsulated an entire work of art, from the clothes right through to the image itself. Men and menswear were intrinsic to Gianni Versace's thinking. He created the proud, gym-built poser and sensually lusty male. His male ideal was overtly sexual, inviting spectatorship both of the body revealed in draped shirts that revealed the torso and of fetish types of virile clothing such as leather, fringe and studs. When you look at a Versace shirt, it's actually cut V-shaped for the male torso with broad shoulders and tiny waist and is more like a blouse in its choice of material, cut and colour. The upper torso is given extra attention through draping in such a way that the exposed pectoral muscles and nipples become part of the design of the shirt. Not here. <laughs> I'm wearing a vest. <laughs> Versace's manifesto, Men Without Ties, is basically a coffee table scrapbook of images of beautiful men. <sighs> The title of the book serves as a metaphor reversing the principle of the great male renunciation by which 19th century men relinquished their extravagant embroideries, dashes of lace and bright colours in favour of sombre grey, blue and brown frock coats, ideal for hiding the grime of the modern industrial city. Gianni Versace wanted men to be flamboyant and sexy just like women, offering the perfect male counterpart to the woman he had created. Whereas Gianni was the creative force behind the house, it was his sister and muse, Donatella Versace, who was the driving force behind the brand's exclusive celebrity clientele. The January 1990 issue of British Vogue was a watershed for fashion. Celebrating the new decade, the original five 90s supermodels, Linda Evangelista, Naomi Campbell, Christy Turlington, Cindy Crawford and Tatiana Patsitz appeared on the cover. In the same year, George Michael vowed not to appear in any of the videos for his new album, Listen Without Prejudice, and so he had the famous cover girls lip-sync for their lives in his Freedom 90 videos. The House of Versace capitalised on its success. For the autumn winter 1991 runway presentation, Gianni and Donatella had Linda, Naomi, Christy and Cindy mouth their way down the catwalk to their friend George's anthem, Freedom 90. This was the stuff that young homosexual boys' fashion dreams were made of. Donatella was also responsible for forging relationships with Madonna, Elton John, Prince, Bon Jovi and royalty too. Versace also dressed Princess Diana. The pure magic of Donatella is that she has continued to form special bonds with the world of celebrity and has more recently dressed J.Lo, Lady Gaga, Alicia Keys and Lizzo. Donatella said, 
it is with clothing that our icons create their own unforgettable image. And with a little bit of help from Versace. You know Versace? In the forum? Oh, I love Versace. When her brother was tragically murdered in 1997, Donatella was left to continue Gianni's legacy. Donatella debuted her first collection for Atelier Spring Summer 1998 on a see-through catwalk held over the swimming pool at the Ritz Hotel in Paris. Although the collection received instant acclaim from industry insiders, throughout the remainder of the 90s and into the 2000s, the brand suffered as Donatella struggled to find her own identity and battled with addiction. Donatella has since embraced her brother's legacy and as a tribute to him, on the 20th anniversary of his death, she enlisted the original 90s supermodels including Naomi Campbell, Cindy Crawford and Claudia Schiffer to walk the runway clad in gold oriton, receiving a standing ovation nonetheless. The House of Versace is back on the rise and is now a multi-million euro company with a clear brand identity. Collections since the iconic spring-summer 2018 show have embraced the house codes that Gianni, with the help of his sister, cemented into the history of 20th century fashion, but with that Donatella twist that makes Versace unique within contemporary fashion. There is so much more to the House of Versace than is possible to fit into one episode. The genius of Gianni Versace was that he challenged the fashion industry's barometer of good taste and liberated women through his sexy and flamboyant designs. The reason that Versace triumphed is because the designer maintained an unerring sense of what he was selling, and that was a fantasy life of opulence, sensuality, extravagance and luxury. His vision of glamour, his synthesis of traditional and contemporary, colour and print was embracing, celebratory and life-affirming. As Gianni once said, fashion is not just a piece of fabric, no, no, no. It is an attitude, it is a way to express, it's you. One thing is for sure, Gianni Versace was never afraid to dazzle. Well, that's it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the glamorous world of the House of Versace. Episodes 1 to 5 of Fashion And are also available to watch now. Please comment, like and share and please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing from Fashion And with me, Scott Schiavone, Fashion Curator.